Hello, welcome back everybody. This is Eon Chikino, continuing my Heart of the Swarm mini-series on the units and various things. So I just did the Oracle one, and I forgot to mention real quick that the Oracle has an upgrade at the Fleet Beacon that will allow it to start with 25 extra energy. So there's that. Now on to the next unit is going to be the Tempest, the flying capital ship that I guess is meant to replace the carrier. So the Tempest, let's look at it. Build it on the Stargate once you build the Fleet Beacon. Uh, at the Fleet Beacon, it does have an upgrade, which gives it plus 12 range. No, that's not a mistype. That's actually 12 extra range. It's 150, 150, uh, and takes 100 seconds to make. So, let's check out the Tempest. Hotkey is T by default. 300 minerals, 300 gas, 6 supply, 75 second build time. So, compare that to a Void Ray, uh, which is 60 second build time. So, just a little bit longer. If you Chrono Boost that, it's pretty quick relatively speaking. Uh, the Tempest can actually attack ground and air units, so if we want to send out some poor helpless tanks versus the Tempest, the Tempest can fly out there and uh, shoot them up. Attack ground and air, like I was saying, does 30 damage, range of 10 by default. Let's have these guys dance here. So, uh, range of 10 by default, weapon speed 3.3, so it doesn't attack very fast, as you can see here. It's got an animation that it shoots a little ball, it kind of uh, builds it up there like uh, like in so many fighting games or uh, animes, like, and then boom, shoots it out. So that's kind of the animation they're going with there. And of course, air and ground, zero uh, plasma shields by default, armor and two armor plating by default, 1.88 move speed. So pretty slow as far as flying goes. I think it's the same speed as a uh, battle cruiser. Battle cruiser is 1.88. So yeah, they share the same. Uh, movement speed. So you aren't going to be kiting battle cruisers with these things. But one thing though is uh, you can sort of kite them because the range for um, yes, Yamato Cannon isn't as far as the range for the Tempest once you get their upgrades. So let's get their upgrades. Research. You won't have to worry about the Terran player just having his battle cruisers and uh, let's see, get all these Research. guys battle cruisers. So let's say you got your battle cruisers, you want to do your Yamato Cannon. You want to motto cannon those guys. You can shoot from this far away and do a bunch of jam damage uh, before the battle cruisers, you know, get in range to do your motto cannon. You can just fall back to your army, so you can get a couple pot shots off on those battle cruisers before they get a motto cannon off. So you can't fully kite them forever, but you can go and do some damage and then run away and have a fallback point. But look at that, the range is crazy. This is 20. Not a fusion core. 22 range. Look at that. It's just like. They're just attacking from off the screen. It's like, you're just sitting here all minding your own business, and like there's just balls coming in out of nowhere. Just like, what? Where am I getting attacked from? This is crazy. Look at that. It's like across my whole screen. Insane range on this. So, this is like almost the ultimate siege unit as far as range goes. It can just shoot from forever away. Imagine if maps had, uh, if, imagine if the edges of maps weren't so close to the mineral line. You could just have a, a Tempest like way over here harassing a mineral line. That's just, it's crazy. So they have a really great siege function and the, the amount of range they have. So let's look at their life. 150, li or sorry, 150 shields, 300 life. So if you want to compare that to a battle cruiser, uh, which has got 550 total. So it, it's kind of similar to it, just like 100 less, but they kind of make up for that in range. Once again, 30 damage, and uh, yeah, these things are kind of like, I feel they're going to maybe, I'm trying to relate to how they'll play with the current way people play Protoss. So imagine your standard Protoss death ball. They're trying to push into your opponent's base, they're trying to push into their opponent's base, let's say Zerg, let's say PVZ. There's a whole big line of spine crawlers, a whole big line of uh, spore crawlers, and a bunch of infestors. What can you do against that? How can you break that? Well, now that you have a unit with 22 range, you can assault that, and the, the Zerg player is going to eventually be forced to attack. It's not like Colossus where, okay, you can do some damage with the Colossus because your opponent has Broodlords. This kind of makes the siege capabilities for the Death Ball even greater. You don't need a whole bunch of Tempests. You could probably just get four or five to kill off one or two spine crawlers, one or two spores, and slowly approach, slowly attack with your opponent, uh, slowly attack your opponent's base. Um, is it going to be used as harass? I don't know. I mean, these are really, really late game units, so I don't see them being used as harass unless it's a really scrappy game and you got like one or two spread out and your opponent has five bases. Something like that may happen, but I really see it more used as like a siege unit 
uh, maybe some type of uh, like after the map gets split and you're kind of all lined up, both players have their map and the other players their map, and you kind of want to just be cost effective killing that Zerg army. Um, that's one thing that's been happening quite a bit lately is you see Zerg players, especially like Demaga, who just have this insane army of pure infester broodlord and spine crawlers and a couple spores, and you'll be like, how do I engage that without losing my whole army? And it's really hard. So I think this is what Blizzard has added into the game uh, to kind of give Protoss a, an option for actually attacking that that Zerg death ball. Now as far as goes, like, how does this affect Terran versus Protoss? Um... I'm kind of thinking it has mostly to do with Vikings and, of course, battle cruisers. You can use these Tempests as defense to protect your Colossus, because mostly Vikings used Vikings are used to kill uh, Colossus. And with these, uh, with the Tempests, you can get a lot of free pot shots on the Vikings. Now, earlier uh, in earlier videos, these Tempests actually did splash damage, like a lot of splash damage, and I don't think they deal that much splash damage. Uh, more if any so let's just take a look at this let's get uh, some phoenixes out here for some protection <clears throat> so yeah he's already attacking so let's group him up here and see what they do so yeah exactly no splash damage whatsoever at all with the mutalisks so yeah no splash damage at all from the tempest I thought they the, so they used to have splash sorry splash damage not so much anymore Confirmed. So yeah, pretty simple unit, just a flying unit that does a bunch of, uh, not a bunch, but a decent amount of damage from an insanely long range, and that's pretty much all I got to say about the Tempest. If you have any questions or any things you want me to uh, test out or demonstrate, post in the comments, ask me a question, send me a tweet, whatever. My Twitter is at uh, Yanchikino. Uh, also, follow me on YouTube, all that good stuff. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time.